Great show. Great show. Great quickly. News for 800,000 Florida LGBT. We're going to talk about that. Exciting. Whoop, whoop. Apparently, it's Keep Women's Physicians and, Day as well. And Pete Buddha Judge. Yes, Pete. Pete, Pete. Mayor Pete. Mayor the Pete winner. is Cabinet Secretary Pete. God. Yay. He just made history, guys. And it's Black History Month. That's very exciting. So much happening. Oh my God. Yep. This is. Oh, are we doing the mask? Yes. So let's have a great show. It's going to be a fantastic show. We'll do our best. All right, let's do it. I'm going to mess it up. No. <laughs> 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 yes, he is, by the way, America. Good evening, America, and welcome to It's Happening Out, the world's most popular live gay television talk show. As you know, it's 8 p.m. Wednesday, it's February 3. I'm your anchor, Al Ferguson, and let's start by meeting these amazing hosts for tonight's show. First up, this is Power Infinity. He's the one that's gonna mess the show up. He's an original <laughs> host of It's Happening Out. He is a hybrid diva. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Again, there we go. go. Yeah. There we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Bitch, we're on. Good evening, Power. <laughs> Good evening, Al. Let's get this show on the road. All right. Stop talking now. Uh, this is Faye. What? She's a radio host and has a popular YouTube channel. Faye is the new host also of HappeningOut.Travel, the LGBTQ news and information show. Good evening, Faye. Hola, mi gente. Happy to be here. Uh, next up, please welcome another longtime member of the It's Happening Out family, Chef Josie. She's a Bravo TV top chef and the master of the popular champagne, oyster, and celebration restaurant here in Wilton Manors, Bubbles and Pearls. Welcome, Chef Josie. Ah, what's going on, people? You ready to have some fun tonight? We are. Let's <laughs> welcome Tony Lima. He is the chief operating officer of Ariana Center, Translatina, Florida, and is also a longtime South Florida LGBTQ activist, advocate, and political operative. And oh, by the way, it's his birthday. Whoop, whoop. Welcome, Tony. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for that, Al. I'm so excited to be here tonight with you all. It's going to be fun. And finally, uh, let's welcome our, uh, well, next, let's welcome our guest host uh, tonight, Jonathan Welsh. Uh, he is Associate Director of Communications and Development at Care Resource, one of the country's most important nonprofit health service providers. Welcome, Jonathan, to It's Happening Out. Thank you very much. Very happy to be here tonight. And uh, while I can't see it in my teleprompter, welcome Gordon Woodworth III. Uh, you have stepped in at the last moment, and uh, of course you always come through, so thanks for saving us. Good evening, Gordon. Thanks, Al, and to everybody who celebrated, I hope you had a blessed in bulk. Yeah. All right, we'll explore that, I'm sure, and what's on your mind. So good evening, America. We are the first and most popular live LGBTQ talk show in the world. So much to talk about next on It's Happening Out. This week on It's Happening Out. Join us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. It all starts right now, live on It's Happening Out. Well, we're going to begin with happening now breaking news. Uh, it's Happening Out comes on the air this evening to report a gigantic victory for LGBTQ Floridians. The agency that enforces state civil rights law has affirmed this afternoon that discrimination in employment, housing, and public accommodations based on sexual orientation or gender identity is illegal. The Florida Commission on Human Relations, FCHR, has issued a notice formally announcing its intent to fully implement <laughs> the U.S. Supreme Court's ruling in Bostock versus Clayton County and investigate claims of anti-LGBTQ discrimination. We believe that this is the first state in the Deep South to enact such a sweeping anti-discrimination position. 
in a first for over 800,000 LGBTQ Floridians. The decision provides those who experience discrimination an official state channel now through which to file a claim and affords them full protection of Florida's civil rights laws. My goodness, amazing. Comes wow. right out of the blue. What do y'all think? I mean, where do you begin? I, I know already a handful of people who are going to benefit, including myself, but all of our entire community. But just think about our trans community. And this is this has been a conversation. We've talked about it over and over uh, through the, you know, throughout the months, the many months, uh, the last four years. And just to hear this, I'm I'm going to be calling all my friends in case they haven't heard the news. This is really cause for celebration. Like as someone that's been working on this work specifically for, for the last 10 years, this was what I did 60 hours a week, every single day, right? Yes. So this is, I'm still sitting here and, and a bit incredulous, but it, it's finally happened. And especially as Josie says, like when it comes to our trans community, the people that are most vulnerable and marginalized and most discriminated against, this is incredible, incredible news. So I am elated. So not only is it my birthday, I get to celebrate this huge, huge milestone oh, nice. in my life as a professional. That's right. I would take it as a personal victory for right? your birthday. And thank you, Tony, yeah. and happy birthday to you. But, you know, this none of this could never could have ever happened if it wasn't for people like Tony Lima and the rest of them. So thank you for everything that you do on a daily basis. Happy birthday to you. And it's a happy day in Florida. Yeah. About time. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me just say, um, I'm especially surprised at this. And the reason why I'm surprised at this, and pleasantly so, is because well, it's Florida. <laughs> I mean, if it's foolishness, it's Florida. And so you usually don't expect this type of progressive um, leading step in, of all the states, Florida. So I'm surprised because we have a mostly Republican, um, you know, Congress, a Republican governor, and yet we took this step. And actually, now that I think about it, Florida had um, also led the way when it came to um, gay marriage before the Supreme Court had ruled it so. So sometimes Florida does surprise you. You know, it's, it's interesting to me. I knew late this afternoon uh, in this breaking news, uh, we led with it in uh, Queer News Tonight in, uh, um, in our evening broadcast at 7. Um, I knew it was big news when uh, my friend Nadine Smith was giddy. And uh, whenever she's giddy, uh, the executive director of Quality Florida, it's big news because Nadine's never giddy. She, of all things, <laughs> that's true. Giddy is not. Yeah, I can of. vouch for Al. Exactly. <laughs> and she had all right. Uh, let's move on. We want to celebrate that moment, but we've got more uh, breaking now news. History. Mayor Pete becomes a cabinet secretary and is the highest serving LGBTQ official in American history. And what's with the 13 who voted no? Uh, they were, by the way, mostly older, mostly white, mostly deep south southern states. We wonder if this is a measuring stick on this vote, 83 um, to, or 87 to 13 with one that did not vote, if this is not a measuring stick for homophobia in the south. And by the way, in the gayest place on planet Earth, both Florida Senators, Rick Scott and Marco Rubio, voted no. What do y'all think about this news on Mayor Pete? Correction, correction. Florida is not the gayest place on planet Earth. Wilton Manors might be, Fort Lauderdale might be. We're not going to give Florida that, that credit. Um, but here again, Florida takes one step forward and of and course does the, the okie doke with the one step back, you know. Um, I really wish that, that um, our producers had put the names of the 13 up on the screen. It would have been very interesting for our audience to see the 13. But yes, you know. I can uh, tell you one, right off the top of my head, Texas, Louisiana, uh, uh, Mississippi, uh, Georgia, Alabama, um, Alabama, work, Al. <laughs> Alabama <laughs> Florida, Florida, Florida. South, Dakota, uh, South Carolina, and Tennessee, uh, also uh, uh, Missouri. And I mean, wow. listen, it's, it's all led by, well, they're like the 13 disciples now, the, the ones leading in Congress and then Senate uh, who are, 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 you know, still 
under the illusion that Trump won the election. So, I mean, what do we expect from them, guys? Those guys are going to eventually disappear, and it doesn't even matter because today was we made history. And I'm not going to let 13 um, psychos, okay, who happen to be legislators, ruin the day. That's right. Well, I think that this is really important for us to point out because I... I wish you, that you're right, Josie, that they're all going to go away sometime, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. And I feel like we need to keep pointing out issues like this because it makes it very clear that there is one party that is not on the side of LGBTQ rights in this country. Not everyone in the party, but the people who are against us are in that party. And it's very That's clear right. by this vote. And the events of this week, they're not even for the American people. They won't even support supporting a stimulus to us. So we got to keep pointing it out and keep voting for the people that oppose them. Well, Mayor, Mayor Pete could have gotten a better position. I mean, if you look at all the departments, I mean, the Department of Energy, Department of Health and Human Services, Department of State, Department of Defense, Department of Transportation, it's kind of, it's kind of a, a shoe-in position. George Bush uh, gave the position to Bill Clinton's um, former um, um, head of the Department of Transportation. I mean, Trump had somebody that uh, our, our ambassador to Germany was a Trump appointee. And that is kind of, uh, that's really awesome po public policy work there. And I think that he could have gotten a position where he had more teeth, where he can do more I mean, there's so many things around the world that are that affect our LGBT friends worldwide. I mean, especially in Africa, especially in Eastern Europe. And I think we need a strong voice from America, somebody like Pete, that can serve as a, a burning bright star for people around the world who are LGBT. And I just thought, I just feel it was a cushion. It was a position. Okay, give him the Department of Transportation, but. He could have gotten more. He could have gotten better. And, and I look forward to seeing him grow. I completely agree with you, Jonathan. Yes, Gordon, I, I know. Gordon, I, I'm glad someone said it other than me for once. <laughs> because I would have loved to have him it's in true. a position that he was actually qualified for. But obviously there's a political reason for doing this. It looks very good for the Democratic Party. And it's hard to not vote him in for a non-controversial controversial position like this so i get it and but I, I don't like I, it i'm going to take the opportunity unless there's other big observation to move on but i do want to say broadly to everyone the one thing that we can take celebration even if all of those comments are true the boy's 39 years old mm -hmm. so we've got a long history ahead in fact perhaps maybe the first vice president or president of the United States. Uh, he opens the door as cabinet secretary of transportation that forever is going to be kicked open, forever. So we can take celebration. And hopefully he'll move left and stop representing moderate well, partisan politics. All right, we'll see, we'll see. He's 39. How old are you, Gordon, again? I'm 25. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's um, uh, remind you, you are watching a live and unedited LGBTQ talk show. So anything can happen. If you're on YouTube, make sure to subscribe and click the bell for updates. If you're on Facebook, like and subscribe uh, or share uh, the video. Start a watch party. It's super easy uh, to do. Let's begin uh, the show out of our breaking news with the meme of the week. And I have absolutely no idea what that meme is. So we're just going to show it to you. And uh, this is our meme of the week. Oh, oh. oh. it looks like it hurt. <laughs> this is a test. Is it going into their brain? <laughs> Are you home? Stupid Corona. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've had that done. I did it to myself many times. <laughs> Josie said it what are we many talking times. about again? <laughs> forty <laughs> days and forty nights, as they said in the Bible. Yeah. What that, do you think about the meme of the, the week? That was the meme of the week. <laughs> 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 
happened Just be glad around. that it wasn't a chlamydia test, because it would have looked a lot different. Oh. Uh, <laughs> write write uh, a postcard to oh uh, uh, Steve Lowley, and he'll take up your objection. <laughs> OK, um, let's uh, move on to um, I'd Swallow That. It's uh, playing our drinking game of yes or no called I'd Swallow That. We invite you at home to play along with us. It's, I always say, it's my favorite part because I'm getting ready to do shots, hopefully. Um, I'm going to ask these hosts for questions. If they agree, and if you agree at home, take the shot. Uh, dry January is over, so you can play again. <laughs> if, you uh, if you disagree with the question, well, it's going to be a long night for me. Everybody ready? Ready. All right, then let's play I'd Swallow That. Question number one. After 2020, with Trump and COVID-19, America's probably never going to return to being the same again. Duh. Duh. <laughs> I hope so. It's an easy shot. So it looks like everybody is taking the shot. What do you... Uh, what do you think we've lost? Have we lost our virginity? Have we lost our innocence? What did? What are we not going to return to? I don't think so, because they said that after 9-11 that we had lost our innocence and we lost all these things. I feel like as long as we keep letting people on the right do crazy things, this type of thing is going to keep happening. So hopefully we'll do something to stop them. I'm personally experiencing this whole moment as a as breaking new ground, as like a phoenix rising from the ashes, as a world of possibility that now has opened because of what we've seen, what we've been through, what we've experienced as a society. There's no way to return back to where we were because too much has been revealed. And now we get to create the future, an equitable future for all of us. That's a very optimistic view. Oh, I hope it sure right. is well, very, very, very opti optimistic oh. indeed. Um, I will say that, that <laughs> I will say that we from the show. <laughs> I, I will say that we have what we have we have um, escaped from is our naivete, because I will credit Trump for one thing: he opened my eyes to a lot of things that were going on right above, around, and beneath us that we did not know. And mm -hmm. so I think that we're we're now a little bit more aware. Um, we don't take for granted the things that we could lose because we realize that we could lose them again if we don't stay vigilant and speak up and speak out. That's a good point. I agree with Josie and Power. I think it's mm -hmm. it's an opportunity for rebirth, but it's because we're smarter now. We're we're in a better headspace and we know how bad it can potentially get. So hopefully we're all going to work really, really hard to not get back there again. So am I the only one that has PTSD then? Am I the only one? Because I can't, no. see a tr I can't see a big truck without expecting a Trump sticker to be on it. I look at the American flag completely different. Oh, I am yeah. certain about the world. Uh, financial insecurities. I hardly trust the cops. I, I keep on waiting for the other shoe to drop with Biden. So am I the only one that is like no, an abused ex? No, you're no, just joining you're the rest of us. <laughs> no, you're not. I, th I, think, I think I'm very stoic throughout this whole thing. I mean, our country has been through a lot. Its history is really long. and We've experienced so many things in the 60s. Things were chaotic. We had a lot of problems in the 80s. We all suffered 9-11 together, where you know, we suffered the war in Iraq together, Afghanistan together. We suffered Enron together. I mean, we're millennials. I think a lot of us on this on here are millennials, and we've seen, I think, establishment the institutions, you know, kind of ruin things for us. And I think seeing a lot of this stuff play out just wants to get me involved. Like, it really just, and I think a lot of young people, they, they see what's going on, on TV and they're like, you know what? I can do that. In fact, I can do it better. Mm. You know? Well, I hope that that's the case. That's um, let's move on to question number two in I'd Swallow That. Valentine's Day. It's coming, but who really cares because it's a straight community holiday. Oh. Faye and I are going to, are the only two, all right? Mm. Initially, and when I Jonathan. saw, 
initially when I saw V Day, I thought it was Vagina Day, and I got super excited. Right? <laughs> and then, it, you know, then Mr. Tony Lima had to express to me that it was Valentine's Day. And you know what? In the Albertans household, Valentine's Day is every day. I don't need one day to put white chocolate all over my wife. You know, we could do that any day. So well, that's why. <laughs> you do that often. I like that. I want to hear more. I want to hear more. You know, I've always identified with Valentine's Day. I'm totally the February guy because my birthday is in February, as we all know. And I have, I've always tried to create special moments when I'm with a special someone. But this year that I'm single is all hell. And yes, that's on purpose and intentional. Any guys out there interested in this, like, <laughs> Juanito Bear right here, come on over. Wait, but now that I'm... we just become grinder? In, uh, in a little bit. My bear? Yeah. A little bit. Oh, it's oh, Juanito he's a Bear. single he's male. Okay. Bear. You're fine. <laughs> Whenever you see something like that, it's fine. Listen. But the reality is that this year, I'm feeling a little bit bitter. So I didn't take the drink, but I'm going to take it right now. Oh, okay. So I didn't take a drink because Valentine's Day is definitely not a straight holiday. First of all, it's a Catholic corruption of a oh. Roman pagan <laughs> holiday. Oh Here we go. Here we go. And it's, Generation Z. it's literally a <laughs> Roman pagan holiday about having sex with whoever you want and having a good time. And that's definitely a gay community thing. So no, they can't take that from us. I should have said that in my ad. I mean, I should yeah, in your I, ad. I don't celebrate any of these uh, commercialized holidays. Holidays. I don't need excuses like Faye to to say I love you to my wife or 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 actually ask our friend to be our Valentine. Uh, anyways, that's another story for another Ooh, day. I want to uh, that too. Yeah, you heard it first. Breaking news right here, guys. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so I don't, I don't need, I don't need Valentine's Day to inspire anything like that. But you know, it's fun to play along and like, it's, it's just life, man. Uh, YOLO. <sighs> That's because you have a gorgeous remember wife in elementary you at school. Home, I'm just saying, or at your restaurant, I should remember, say. You remember in elementary school when we used to have the paper brown bags and all everybody's come by and put the oh, the Valentines gosh, into it and the whole class, it was a whole class oh, thing. No, see, and I you would take it out of the brown me. bag and you would feel so loved. You'd be like, oh, everybody loves me. And, and you would have like candy and you would have notes and basically you just felt good. And I don't know, I think with COVID this year, a lot of people don't feel good. And I, I just want to be like the Santa Claus of Valentine's Day. I think this year mm -hmm. I'm just going to go to like Publix, Win Dixie, Whole Foods, forever, and just get a bunch of those small candy heart things and just give them away oh, to people. Right. That, you mean, like, you know, why not? It's low the line other fruit. Roman pagan figure that's adorable. in this holiday. Well, wow. Right. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah, that's cute. Thank you. We're done with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, question number three. I'll in this mouth. I'd swallow that. The impeachment trial will not lead to Trump's removal from office. No. I'm taking two shots. Yep. Take them. Take them. What is this stuff? What do y'all think? <laughs> It's know. nothing it but a symbolic move. can't lead to his move. removal from Wrong. office because he's already gone from yeah. office, guys. Yeah. So I'm drinking, okay? Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know, anyways, I don't even want to get into the, because uh, I don't want to speculate. I don't want to speculate. I believe that they've written the, uh, the, I'd swallow that that way. So power was not able to say, he's been impeached. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's it annoying been, to me because it been, it's, um, I think it would have been, uh, the question would have probably been more uh, precisely posed if it had said um, that we believe he will not be convicted because mm -hmm. I think that's what everybody was really drinking to. We know that the Republic cowards don't have the moral fiber um, or the moral compass or the spine to do what's right and to hold him accountable. And I really would think that that would be a bipartisan you know, a bipartisan decision. And I would think it would be an easy one, but here we go again with politics um, over principle. And so, no, he will not be convicted, which is a shame yeah. because that conviction would have really led to him not being able to hold public office ever again. That's yeah. what I'd like. I'm curious too, does anyone think uh, that uh, the impeachment trial will lead to conviction or even close to it, that yeah. there's a chance? Does anyone even well, think you there's know a chance? If I was if I was the publicist for Joe Biden, I would say, listen, we have to get those those ratings up big. How about this? You go in there and you say, not I pardon him. I pardon 
me, Joe Biden, in my ever extending benevolence in an effort for real unity and reaching out and for us to close this chapter, just to close this chapter and move on, you know, and just pardon him. Uh-uh. And I disagree like, wholeheartedly. <laughs> Say yeah. what? Oh, man. Y'all see my face? Y'all see my face on I this camera? Face. No. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, if, that would be together, Joe Biden, really. If Joe, if Joe Biden did that, I would tell them to impeach Joe Biden. <laughs> agreed. Exactly, power. Exactly. Agreed. 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 I, I'm going to move on to question four, but I was going to answer your question, Jonathan, by saying, you know, I, I haven't heard somebody suggest that Biden pardon him, but I kind of like that idea just so I could see Power Infinity's head explode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, question number four. <laughs> this Sunday is the Super Bowl, and we have a special sneak peek commercial. Watch this. Did you know that Norway sells way more electric cars per capita than the U.S.? Norway. <laughs> well, I won't stand for it. Come on. Oh, never mind. With GM's new Ultium battery, we're going to crush those losers. Crush them! Let's go, America! Keenan, Norway's out EVing us. Wait, what's this? Oh, it's my daughter's birthday. She's really an pirate. I don't lately. care. Grab an EV, meet me in Norway. Okay, can I say goodbye to my family? Nope. All right. Ah! <clears throat> Aquafina, sorry to disturb you, but Norway's beating us at EVs. Nuh-uh. Uh-huh. Nuh-uh. <clears throat> uh-huh. Meet me there in an hour. Can I ride with you? No! GM's Ultium battery is made for all types of vehicles, so soon everyone can drive an EV. Oh! Why don't we all just go together? No one will, he's probably flying private. Hey, Norway, listen up, you fish loving! Oh, this place is adorable. Damn it. Where are you guys? We're in Finland. Where are you? I'm in Norway. Norway? You're in Sweden. Oh, damn it! <laughs> well, <laughs> Gia good. might have paid us a little to run that. I, I, I but I'd swallow that. We're gay, and it's the Super Bowl. Who cares about the game? It's all about the halftime show and the commercials. What do y'all think? Oh, come on now, people. Jeez. It's all about... <laughs> Don't you, we're a bunch of gay boys. What do you expect? <laughs> all the boys drink. I drank too. No, it's all about the commercials, the halftime show, the bad food because I'm a fat ass, and watching my wife scream at the TV because she hates Tom Brady for freaking four hours. That's what it's all about. Don't Back be... in the Super Bowl? Oh, Again. my God. Again. Oh, don't be talking about my Buccaneers of Tampa. Oh, oh God. so I didn't even know that the Super Bowl was happening until this <laughs> was reported. Like I found out this week because Jody, that's how much I don't follow. A Gen Z catch up party. Oh, no, well, God. there's two things with this. One, I never understood why they put a football game around the Madonna concert or the Lady Gaga concert or <laughs> whatever. That's the you. only reason we're oh, watching. Guys. Well, but listen. also, I do want to highlight, while I have a moment, the fact that it's really sad that the one of the teams that's playing is a team that monopolizes or capitalizes off of taking indigenous people's culture and image <laughs> and bastardizing oh, it. God. And that's oh, fucked up. Say, it was a pagan ritual. Of some Love this guy. Okay. Well, I'll just tell you. I Love I, this guy. Yeah. <laughs> I first off, I can't drink it. Okay, I can't drink the shot. Although I just did because I'm feeling left out. But I can't drink the shot because I'm a former female football player, guys. What? And this would be me poo pooing on the entire player. sport. Okay, but yes, I do agree, guys. It's and, all about and that. Wait, and I'm going to let everybody Josie. in on that. I, I've just got to provide an exclamation point to Josie. Josie was a professional woman's football player for the New York team. How sexy. Wow. That's yeah, I thought you just said yeah, high school football player. we won the Super Bowl, player. so... Uh, no, no I was a high school sexy. football player. Josie was a oh. professional in New York. Okay. No, that's Ooh, for the surprising. New York Sharks. Sharks those, were the, those were the whorish years. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so who's performing at the Super Bowl anyway? 
Like, I'm sort of like Gordon somewhere in the middle. Like, I know the Super Bowl's happening, but don't know anything about it. Yeah, who? Yeah, it's like we got all these straight people together in one place. It just sounds terrible. The weekend. I mean, I just found out. No, the weekend. I just found out right now from I just found out right now from Al that the Tampa Buccaneers are going to be in the Super Bowl. Oh, my God. Exactly. That stadium, the Super Bowl stadium is 32 minutes from your house. 32 minutes from your house. And you don't know where it's being played. It could be right across the street, the Tyler. I couldn't be bothered. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. right, let's. That's our game. I'd swallow that. And, and we just proved how gay it really is. <laughs> uh, next up, let's catch up with the news from Hollywood and the world of entertainment. We call this celebrity and pop culture hot topic of the week. Have you dreamed about going into space? I have. We are going to show you a sneak peek of another Super Bowl commercial that is going to debut Sunday. And it could be your ticket into space. Watch this. No. Those are polar bears. Oh, I mean, uh, panda bears. How cute. Twinkle, twinkle. Did you see the interview about this? Stop. This fall, Inspiration4 launches as the first all-civilian mission to space. And you could be on board. Up above the world so Visit Inspiration4.com for your chance to go to space. Bezos from SpaceX and another billionaire have started a campaign to raise $200 million uh, for um, the, um, the, the Celebrity Hospital, the Children's Hospital program. And they're going to send four people into space to do an orbital flight on SpaceX with no astronauts. And you can win a seat by donating even one dollar when the campaign opens <laughs> on Super Bowl Sunday. And everyone that donates um, to the charity uh, goes into the drawing and they're going to select somebody uh, and people to go on this charity flight called Inspiration4 to raise uh, this $200 million. It's going to start and announce on Sunday. What do y'all think? You want to go into space? You know, I took a drug once that made me think <laughs> that I was in space. And that whole not having gravity thing, I don't know. My, my boobs were very against it. So <laughs> I, I'm, I don't know about going into space. I'm not ready. I'm not ready, guys. It's a good cause, St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Well, the truth of the matter is, is uh, Jeff Bezos should just fund this program. I don't know why he's out there trying to raise money by from and, and hitting up the Americans who have been out of work for the last uh, year due to a pandemic. But okay, that's besides the point. Uh, maybe we could. Uh, sorry, you know, turn for the worst there. But um, maybe I'd be interested in taking a trip around the orbit. You know, just once, bucket list. You know. Howard, would you go into space? Uh, the only time I intend to go to space is when Jesus Christ comes to take me to heaven. That's it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's I done told y'all uh, last week um, on our other show, our Gay Town Hall, that I remember the Challenger um, when I was a little kid. Yeah. And that has, you know, always been in, in, implanted in my head. It's been traumatized for me and I just cannot see myself and happy to give a dollar I think right. the three organization is, is All good right. well donate to it and uh, and uh, donate in my name uh, power make sure you make a donation and do it in my name because I want to go into space that's our discussion on the entertainment and pop culture uh, this week uh, you'll see that commercial and much more uh, on the Super Bowl uh, this Sunday. Go Tampa Bay Buccaneers. First time in history that the Super Bowl is being played in the team's home stadium. First time ever. And they haven't won a playoff game since 2001. Good luck, Tampa. All right. Next, we report that Happening Out Television Network helps support our LGBTQ community. Of course, all of you know this. A super good example of that is Sunshine Cathedral, the world's largest queer church here in Fort Lauderdale. We are broadcasting at this moment 
uh, from our permanent set in supporting that partnership. The network broadcasts the largest LGBTQ religious broadcast in the world, with more than 30,000 watching every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, and it's totally live. We encourage you to tune in. Our campaign of sponsorship proudly supports Sunshine Cathedral is my queer church. Watch this. Hi everybody, my name is Eddie Marti Kring and I'm your field and community organizer for SAVE, safeguarding American values for everyone. And Sunshine Cathedral is my queer church. <laughs> oh Eddie, you're so <laughs> cute. Uh, we'd also like to thank our set designer, Concepto Modern Living here in Fort Lauderdale for making this set in this amazing queer church campus possible. Finally, we'd like to thank our It's Happening Out sponsor, hotel sponsor, Best Western I-95 Fort Lauderdale. This is the closest and best choice to the famous Wilton Drive and our host and guests stay at this LGBTQ allied partner. We encourage you to visit here and when you do in South Florida, this is where you want to stay. Well, next up, It's Happening Out. We'd like to bring attention to the LGBTQ community to the best thing of the week. And this week it's called Ted Hell with COVID impeachment, and all other stories. This video actually gives us life. Watch this. All right, so we're watching. I first misidentified it as polar bears. It's Aww. panda bear. Aww. So this is the Smithsonian feed from the Washington Zoo. And they had that gigantic snowstorm and uh, the two uh, famous panda Aww. bears there. Uh, apparently Aww. were exposed to snow for the first time and learned Aww. how to snow sled Aww. on their backs and their stomachs. When I told Tony Lima that we were going to show a video about bears in the snow, he thought it was something else completely This is better. not what I expected. <laughs> so let's no. just say. But I'm not disappointed. It's adorable. <laughs> oh, look, I could watch this all day. So adorable. So cute. Que lindo. He's Can like, you hey. imagine seeing hey. snow for the first time? Aww. I just I just love how, how animals, you know, we... we kind of think of them as so less than when it comes to intelligence. But I mean, to think that their little brains are processing that snow and matching that up with play and really having that experience. I mean, it's just, I could sit there and watch this all day long. Yeah. It really does I don't think of them feel. as less than, by the way. I'm a pagan. We're not here for that. Yeah. I actually love that this story is happening after that SpaceX story because <laughs> we can talk about why those pandas are in captivity because we're destroying the planet that we're on. And we need to focus on the planet that we're By the on. way, did Gordon. any of our hosts know that Gordon is a Gen Zer and he's a pagan? Did anyone know? Oh, oh yeah. I, I know. It. I okay. love right, Gordon. Right. All right. <laughs> Let's move on to our segment called What's on Your Mind. Each host is going to tell us in just 30 seconds what is, on, uh, what is important to them this week. But remember, in just 30 seconds, are you going to hear this bell? Uh, so let's start. Power Infinity, what's on your mind this week? Well, what's on my mind, uh, shout out to Black History Month. And uh, in honor of Black History Month, I want to take some time to um, give a little shout out to some um, comedy shows that really helped to um, influence me when I was growing up. Sanford and Son uh, with Aunt Esther, The Jeffersons with uh, George, Louise and Mother Jefferson, and of course, Florence, and um, Good Times with JJ's Dynamite. Dynamite, good, and your timing was great. Gordon Woodward, sure. what's on your mind this week? So a couple of things. The vaccine's about to roll out really quick, and there's a lot of people who have a lot of questions and concerns about it. I encourage you all to talk to your own personal physician about it so you can hear someone you trust 
And look up the podcast called Sawbones. They have an amazing show, and they talk about the vaccine and answer a lot of questions. I'm also excited to see the bailout coming or the stimulus, and it's being done without Republican support, which I think is delicious. And I hope to see more of this from the Democratic Congress, and I hope they are unscrupulous. Great. Uh, that's on your mind. And Jonathan Welsh, what's on your mind this week? Well, I was just thinking about that space opportunity. And you know what? <laughs> I want to go to space. I think, I hope that during my lifetime, I can, in fact, even go to moon, to the moon. I just, I want to do big things. And not because they're easy, but because they're hard. And because I want to be the first one to do it. You know, and I think that this is really going to space, going to Mars. It's all very exciting, you know. Absolutely. And you quoted John Kennedy there, which I loved. Uh, and Chef Josie, what's on your mind this week? Uh, well, what's on my mind this week, guys, is making that money, okay? Let me just tell you, this week, for some reason, I have been focused on the green. Because what I realize is, you know, in this world, you need a lot of it to get what you want done. Just take a look at Trump, for instance. You know, he basically bought his presidency, and he's gonna, his <laughs> daughter is going to basically buy the governorship. So I, make, I, I, I figure out if I make enough money, I could do those big things, too. So <laughs> That's on my mind this week. Jeff Josie for governor of Florida. Ah, there it all is. in. There all it in. is. Uh, Tony Lima, what's on your mind this week? Well, I get sort of melancholic around my birthday, and I've been experiencing this thing sort of called pandemic fine where I'm employed and I'm also healthy, but I still feel like trash almost all the time, other than when I'm here with Al Ferguson. Thank you. I don't, I don't even know what to say about that. But I feel like we all need to be grateful. So what I'm focused on is how grateful I am. My friend Faye and I have been talking a lot about how to be grateful, how to really analyze the wonderful things you have in your life that are uplifting you on a daily basis, and really be thankful for that. So that's what I'm thinking about. Great. And Tony, I have to say to you, happy birthday one more time. You. And you're Yay. one of the really super interesting uh, people I have met in 2021. I'm happy to have done it. Thank and you. Faye, what? What's on your mind? Faye, week? what? So I'm thinking about my wife. It's her birthday. She shares the same birthday as Tony uh, Lima. She's and she just walked into the studio. And she studio, just walked into the studio. To stop. Happy birthday, Teresa. I love you. Thank you for being such an amazing partner. For But most of all, for restoring my faith in Aquarians. I had a roommate that was an Aquarian. <laughs> she cut her hair like me, uh, stole my underwear, gave away my cat. And I don't know what else she did. I think she wow. stole my identity, too. So I thought all all Aquarians were nuts until I met you six years ago, and I love you more and more every day. Aww. Aww. Oh, wow. Wait, I'm, I'm a little confused. Uh, two women are married to each other? Uh, <laughs> who would've thunk? Uh, who would've thunk? <laughs> uh, if next we are standing around the LGBTQ water cooler, uh, what would we all be talking about? Well, we refer to it at It's Happening Out as our hot topic of the week. February is Black History Month, as you know, and this week, for the first time ever, three national LGBTQ organizations have black leaders, including Kiara Johnson of the National LGBTQ Task Force, Alfonso David of the Human Rights Campaign, and Imani Rupert Gordon of the National Center for Lesbian Rights. What do y'all think about Black History Month that we begin to celebrate? and this specific LGBTQ achievement. It's about time. It's about time. I feel like one, one thing for me, being part of this movement, working in this movement as a brown person, um, was always that the people that were in leadership everywhere, whether it was HRC, the task force, any of the major organizations, it was always a bunch of white folks that had a lot to say. So for me, it's very, very exciting to see all of these people of color coming up being in leadership positions, starting to change the mantra of the organizations and looking at the organizations through much more of an intersectional lens. And for me, that's, that's a huge plus. I'm trying to be super hopeful this year. I know across all the shows between Q News tonight and here, talking about hope, but this is one of these instances where hope is a real thing. It's happened and we're making progress. Yeah. These three organizations are opening the door to so many other organizations that sometime in the future, we won't have to do a story on this. This will just be normal, be normal. as it yeah. should be. Right. 
Yeah. I agree with both of you. I think that this is long overdue, and I think it's important for us as the gay community to talk about our black history in the gay community because it's been black people that have brought our movement and their movement, our shared struggle, way farther. It's all because of the work they did, and they're often not recognized for it, and we need to talk about it. I don't, I don't want to be Debbie Downer, but <gasps> all of those observations bring us to, why did this take so long? We're, we're not talking about the straight community. We're not talking about America. We're not talking about Uganda. We're not talking, we're talking about the American gay community, which is predominantly white. Yeah, well, Why to go down that, long? you know, Al, to go down that rabbit hole, okay, the invitation you just gave us all, is that it's called racism, okay? And we continue to hear people in our, in our own community, in our own community, mm -hmm. uh, you know, trying to deflect those claims and, and, and actually uh, believe that we're not racist, you know, we're this inclusive community, but we're not. And so we get to look within ourselves, we, we get to really take a very good look. Why? That's a great question, and I don't know if we can just answer it right now, but it definitely leads us down the road to racism. So there you uh, go, guys. I, I, I will agree. I'll piggyback with what Josie said and say it doesn't just lead us down, down the road. If it's leading us down the road, it's a very short road. It's racism, pl plain and simple. Um, I mean, look at, once again, I'm going to point this out. Look at the fact that on almost every single club ad, since the inception of clubs in the gay community, it's always the same standard of beauty is white men. Okay. Um, I love me some white dick just like anybody else. But, um, <laughs> you know, we, got, we have to be, we have to be a little bit more diverse in our representation of no, each no. other. No. Um, and and it, the we we as in the LGBTQ plus community feel that we get a pass when it comes to our own racism because we feel well because we are marginalized and we're discriminated against um, the things that we do low key um, really aren't aren't racist yes it's just as racist as the people that are discriminating against us and like Gordon said black um, and trans have led the way for our gay rights movement that everybody benefits from now but it still shades the black community everybody's all about pose 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 but you know how long we in the ballroom community have been doing it and turning it for the for our lgbt community and only now y'all discovered pose really uh black history is american history black history is gay history so this is long overdue yes it is you know power i i specifically to the observation you just met or you've just mentioned, I watched uh, the seminar that they did at National Task Force at uh, Focus on Change. And when I was watching this and it was drawn to our attention, wait, these three organizational leaders, this is the first time ever that they're all people of color. I thought to myself, and of course we know and we make joke of it that I'm tagged with the white privilege representation, it, it's happening out. It never dawned on me that's right, I'm watching history and it didn't even dawn on me. I've never propelled or promoted that our leadership in our community should be people of color. I've never done that. D is that racist? Is because I haven't been the advocate proponent, could that be considered racism? And in, in this moment, as it's drawn to all of our attention, because most of the people we're talking to are like me, white, people right now most of the years listening to us are white people in the lgbtq community. can i just jump in and, and answer that al um yeah, yeah. You, you ask if if you if you not really recognizing that is racism i don't think it's racism but what i do think is that the fact that it never occurred to you just like it hasn't occurred to a lot of people in our community is an example of systemic racism within our community we can call it micro systemic racism because it happens in a smaller world. In a Organizations in America led by people of color. Will this begin to help turn that tide against systemic racism? Are you, are, are y'all the voices and the faces that I'm looking at right now, are you hopeful this is a gigantic step to change it? This, this is yes. an intentional, an intentional move to shift the conversation within our community. And in that shift will come a ripple effect into the world, into the society that we're all a part of. Um, when, when, you know, when power says that, uh, that this is not, that, uh, 
black history is is American history and black history is uh, LGBTQ history. That's exactly what it is. It's time for us to stop creating these divisions within ourselves, within our within our own communities, within our society. And these are the moves that make this possible. It's intentionally shifting the conversation. Absolutely. Any and now to your point, I, I wanted to say something. You it's not just you, Al. We've all been conditioned to accept white supremacy as the reality, as our daily life, what we're supposed to expect. So even for, for me, it's, and I know that's intentional. I, I know a lot of folks on the boards of those organizations, and that's exactly what they intended to do, which is a great thing. It's also a palpable representation of the beginning of dismantling white supremacy. Mm. Right. And maybe that's why it becomes shocking in some cases where that we're like, oh, look, this is happening. Well, no, it's it's exactly what should be happening and it should be happening much more. And slowly but surely, we will all begin, hopefully, to deprogram ourselves to think about what the possibilities are. When you consider that on most of these like new television shows like Bridgerton or even WandaVision, they're taking scenes from like the 1800s or the 1950s in America. And instead of just showing like what we're used to seeing from 1950s television or period pieces where it was all white folks, well, now we're seeing black folks and brown folks and Asian folks in those representations as well. So again, I think that helps to push the envelope. It helps to normalize things. And hopefully it helps to change the, the, the international discourse on, on racism and white supremacy. Mm. I mean, I, I just want to say before we finish this off, because nobody has said it yet, we're all products of our environment and nobody is immune to that, even gay people. And I somewhat agree, I agree with the heart of what you're all saying, but I do think it's important to talk about the fact that these are people of color and they're leading our different organizations right now, because we're not at a point where we can be privileged enough to be colorblind. Yeah. We're not there. That's Until we get to a point far. where these yeah. people are equally represented, equally respected, and or at least proportionately represented, at the very least, we don't have the ability to do that yet. So I do want to talk about the fact that these people are people of color, and that's something that should be normalized, and we should be proud of it, because they're members of our community. Yeah. Well, it's an interesting and a uh, great note to end the conversation tonight. And all of us, the hosts that you are sitting here watching, I know you at home, um, and everyone at Queer News Tonight uh, and It's Happening Out celebrate uh, this achievement of uh, this achievement of three uh, leadership positions of people of color uh, for the LGBTQ community. Let's move on. And uh, we want to now do some silly um, headlines and some important headlines in the news that have occurred this week and give the host the opportunity to discuss it. We're going to discuss it in our segment called Saved by the Bell. But there's a twist. We are only going to discuss each one of these headlines for just one minute. And at the end of the minute, you're going to hear this bell again. And that means the host has got to stop and we're going to move on to our next topic. So here we go, everybody understand? So this week, the first aerial pride in the world was held in Australia to represent ultimate Freedom, freedom. LGBT freedom. Saved by the Bell headline number one. Australian LGBTQ skydivers come together with pride in a festival first. Talk about <laughs> light in the loafers. Now they're in the air. <laughs> I'm glad someone did it because you wouldn't get me in that plane, that's for sure. That's what I'm screaming. I'm like, those are all white people right there. That's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking. I'm surprised, that, I'm surprised that Josie wouldn't, wouldn't do that. Josie would, would go to the moon, but she wouldn't, uh, she wouldn't fly in the air. Yeah, because you're in like in a, you're inside of something. I'm not just gonna throw myself out of a plane. You know, a perfectly I, good plane. <laughs> you know. So when, when I went skydiving, I was highly inebriated, highly inebriated, right? And like they, you you're supposed to jump, you're supposed to get yourself off, and I could not. I told the, the guy that was strapped to my ass, push me, push me. Yeah. Now what were we time. talking about? You it? couldn't get yourself <laughs> off, and you needed help. <laughs> I, I hear it's life changing, but yeah. you know, yeah. I know that it will be when, the one, when I'm in the plane. That will be at one time when it, it's an accident. I'm just afraid. 
the one Bad. accident. <laughs> you know, I, I went to Key West uh, with uh, a best friend and jumped out at Sugarloaf. And it was amazing. It was a life-changing experience for me. I would do it again. But the, one of the best parts of the experience is it's a tandem dive, you know, skydiving, uh, where somebody's on your back. And uh, the boy that was on my back was 6'4 from Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. ah, boy, that I loved was every back. single I second. Bet I you bet you did. did. <laughs> and you, and you, and you landed you on Exactly. The positioning was not exactly <laughs> correct for me, but you know. Uh, 25 states have failed <laughs> HRC's state's LGBT protection and anti-discrimination standards. But one state was the worst, and Senator Ted Cruz leads them. Ugh. Saved by the Bell, headline number two. Hey, Austin. Hey, Dallas. Did you know in a new report, it says Texas is the worst in America for LGBTQ? Is anyone surprised? I was going to say, not surprised. I'm, I'm not. I'm because surprised. when I think I of mean, places Dallas, that I won't visit, Texas is on my list. I won't go there, uh, period. Now, Texas is amazing, especially Dallas. I love Dallas. The gay scene there is enormous. LGBT, they have a, their, their sheriff is a lesbian. It's a, it's a progressive city. Let's not throw away the baby with the bathwater, because even Austin's nice. Yeah, well, that's what's so interesting no about baby this with fact. No bath <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody throwing away the baby with the ba bathwater, but we're just saying outside of, outside of Austin and Dallas, the rest of this, the state is Ku Klux Klan uh, territory. <laughs> I mean, uh, but my mom lives in Houston. Houston, I mean, Texas is a wonderful place. It's a wonderful place. Um, it's just maybe not so good uh, when it comes to gay issues and, and gay rights. Um, but it's, yeah, I mean, you, it's not like you're, you you're going to go there and be chopped up just by walking down the street. Like, my only observation is I haven't met Austin and Dallas yet, but they sound like a great couple. <laughs> <laughs> they have an OnlyFans page. Pornhub. <laughs> Wait, isn't that who Ex we're talking about? <laughs> we're talking about two guys, right? Somebody else. All right, well, next story. No one is as petty as Kathy Griffin. As power. With oh. the exception of perhaps Power Infinity. You beat me to the joke, dude. So the news this week was particularly juicy. Saved by the Bell, headline three. Kathy Griffin gets her ultimate revenge on the MAGA harasser of her by turning her into the FBI. <laughs> Maybe she'll get her gay boy back. I know she misses Anderson. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like we owe Kathy Griffin so much more than what she's gotten oh, from us no. because she's always been pro gay. And then Anderson turned on her. And when all that stuff with Trump went down, nobody came to her defense. What's that about? Yeah, because it's called BS, okay? The entertainment industry, hello, people. Uh, it needs a lot of reform. And as much as we all like to, I idolize everyone on the A-list. You know, Kathy Griffin was being Kathy Griffin. And then when all her friends were too afraid and too cowardly to have her back during a moment of freedom, okay, it was called freedom of speech and entertainment and art, okay? Uh, when, when it was just a, an act of cowardice. So I hope that Kathy Griffin, call me girl, we'll go ahead and we'll have a comeback, okay? And uh, I, you, you totally need your show back. Mm -hmm. Shout out to It's Happening Out. I, let me just a quick shout out to It's Happening Out for using this particular picture to um, for the graphic for Kathy Griffin, because I know they're going to get some people mad, but oh well, child, we do what we do here. Oh well, no. that's what we do. <laughs> that's it. And, and I've seen Kathy Griffin's show multiple times. You know, you're really genius when you look like you're pompous or you're not very good at what you're doing. That's her genius. Uh, Kathy Griffin, I hope you just roar back in, in our community. I hope that's, uh, uh, that's the case. We love you, Kathy. Um, no is hard it, feelings. Uh, right, exactly. <laughs> is it possible that parts of America treats the LGBTQ community like Russia or Poland or Turkey? Well, the answer is yes, and we learned that this week. Saved by the Bell, headline number four. Puerto Rico rated the number one state or territory in hate crimes, and the governor has had to declare a state of emergency over trans violence. Oh, yeah. 
That's mm. exactly right. That's one of the reasons why Ariana Center, who I, I work for, why we now have an office in Puerto Rico, because we know that the situation there is dire. I mean, when you consider that there have been so almost a one or two trans people dying per month over the last year, no way. right? Which is, which is incredible. Um, so I think this is, they need a lot of help. So anything that we can do here on the mainland to help in the territory, we absolutely have to be doing. Yo, but it, it's this, not surprising. Is this a Latin thing that's going on? Misogyny, toxic masculinity. It is? No, yes, you know what? Authority. No, I wanna, I'm glad that we're that's talking about this because I'm going to bring the same point back that I made on Q News last night. This is a problem with fundamentalist religion, period. The largest group of re religious group in Puerto Rico is Roman Catholics, and then the next is Evangelical Christians. This is a problem of a society with a religion that's teaching them that it's okay to treat gay and trans people like they're less than human. And we need to have a real conversation about that religion's effect. Well, we congratulate the, uh, the governor of uh, Puerto Rico for declaring the state of emergency. They've said enough is enough. That's a start. Absolutely. I guess we love pissing off the American Family Association and one million moms. Oh, which by the way, one million moms is 37 old white men. It's true. Saved by the Bell, headline number five. American girl have released an LGBTQ plus doll and homophobes are losing their damn minds. There's the girl. Why she gotta have a hat on? No, no but she, <laughs> listen to me, the storyline, each of these dolls come with a little story about how their little life, you know? And so her story is that she's got two aunts that got married when they were allowed to get married. That's it. That is the LGBTQ part of this doll. That's it. And they're up in arms going crazy. Come on. So she's not even gay? No! <laughs> I was hoping for some you good know, I, flannel or something. Why, why would she wear yeah. flannel, Gordon? <laughs> Can you please explain that to me? I thought the hat was enough. I know. I'm like, <laughs> Oh, but that's interesting Jeez. that it's not the doll. It's that's not the doll. I was going to say, wait, <laughs> wait, wait. Story. No, it just <laughs> happened here. Josie calls the damn uh, doll out for, why did they have to have a hat on? And Josie's wearing a hat. Wearing Come <laughs> on now. <laughs> I, I well, think that this is I a feel-good story. I, I feel this is a, a feel-good story, actually, because the fact that um, <laughs> those those organizations are pissed off and um, miserable is my delight. Um, you know, we're not doing anything to piss them off. They're being pissed off because they're ignorant. So they're really <laughs> upset in their own ignorance. And if you're going to uh, wallow in your own stupidity, then yes, I'm happy. You know, Jonathan, uh, you're swimming in a pool of sharks, so I'm going to give you the last word because I know it's hard to compete here. Go ahead. Well, I go doll shopping every week, actually. I have a lot of nieces. I have, yes. I have, I have a lot of nieces. Okay. Yes. And when I'm in the doll section at Target, there's they're all, like you said, they all have stories. They all have backstories. Some of them are doctors. Like today's National Physicians, Women's Physicians Day. We have doctors, we have uh, homemakers, we have artists, we have um, all kinds of characters in addition to LGBT. And it just shows how inclusive the toy industry is trying to be, you know, and that's pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's neat to see that because when I was younger, it was G.I. Joe or He-Man. Yeah, <laughs> and it's nice to see all those other choices. And everything that Jonathan Welsh uh, just said was true, except he was shopping for nieces. But everything else. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're the LGBTQ community. Let's move out of Saved by the Bell. So let's have sex and relationship. Sex and relationship. Let's play another game. Our game asks, who would you do? Why would you do it? And what, most importantly, would you do with three different people? Uh, it could be that. Uh, tonight, our game is Shag, Mary Chop. And this tonight is our theme is uh, surrounding Black History Month. So let's play Black LGBTQ Activism is Sexy. So this week, we are going to play with the HRC president and attorney, Alfonso David. I can't wait for him to see this clip. <laughs> TV host and working it girl, RuPaul, or the NFL player, former player, and LGBT sports advoc uh, activist for the NFL, Wade Davis. So let's play Shag, Mary Chop. And of course, I'm going to start with my friend, Power Infinity. I just knew it. I just knew it. <laughs> 
this is almost as bad as when y'all had me, Kevin Avion, <laughs> and kidding me. <laughs> 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 really and Al leans to, in close. I, I just want to get out of this one. Um, <laughs> first of all, is RuPaul uh, an activist? <laughs> RuPaul is an activist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't see her do much activism, so I don't, I don't know why y'all bunched up into here. But um, <laughs> I, I think I will, um, I will shag uh, Alfonso. All right. Um, because of his because legal have, mind. Because I have to. I have to shag somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to shag Alfonso. I am going to marry RuPaul. <gasps> um, because Ru, yes, because uh, RuPaul is the richest. Um, <laughs> I can, I can, I can delve, delve, into his, delve into his closet, and marriage does not necessarily mean sex, so we can just be friends. And um, I don't know... I don't know who Wade Davis is, so he gets the job. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm loving this. This has been great already. We could we could end the show at this moment, and I would be happy. Uh, Jonathan, uh, who would you shag? Well, I mean, I would have bunk bags, I suppose, because each of them have a different characteristic that I like. Like RuPaul, he, he's like energetic, and I can take out and be a lot what, of fun. What is the characteristic that brings feel... you to shagging the most? Which one do you like the best? I suppose Alfonso. I think he there's a classiness there. I think we'll have a nice, sophisticated scotch. I think maybe later on in the evening we'll have a nice, sophisticated cigar. You know, I, I, I can nice. see that happening. All right. And, <laughs> and who are you going to marry then? Uh, Wade Davis. Wade? All Wade right. Davis. Why? Um, because I suppose I'm, I'm an energetic person too. And I think with, with, and I think I can see us like doing a lot of, um, outdoor things, sailing, horseback riding, horseback uh, riding. Oh God. I got jokes. I got jokes. Um, and RuPaul, RuPaul gets the chop, uh, the chop, huh? Uh, well, I, well, I'll let it marinate. It's a lot of questions. I, right now, no, I'm, I'm actually going towards Wade Davis now. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm all in the Wade Davis. I, I was thinking Wait, about riding did horses. Did you just tell us that you <laughs> slip between RuPaul and Wade? Is that what yeah, you Yeah, I just wish. I, I'm, it's all about the Wade Davis now. Okay. All right. And then Ru's uh, chopped. All right. Uh, let's go to our Gen Zer. Uh, and by the way, America, did y'all know he's a pagan? <laughs> Gordon, uh, who are you going to uh, shag? Who do you think? I already you know. You already know what I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, so first of all, I would definitely shag Wade because look at him. Yeah. He's a football player. Um, but I always think that the person you marry is the person you're going to be shagging continually. So Alfonso is definitely my marry one because okay. look at that man he's yeah. nicely dressed he's successful he's making meaningful change for our community i mean i want to shag him over and over and you know i'm going to chop rupaul because again i'm a non-binary person and i don't appreciate the fact that a lot of people think that drag is female illusion when that's not the case at all Ooh, <laughs> all right so you got a political statement in on who you're going to chop i love that i do i love that <laughs> and chef josie uh who are you going to shag Oh God, this is gonna come back to bite me in the yes, ass. I know. Is. Your friend says yes. Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> all right. Well, because I'm just gonna go for what it is that I know, <laughs> and uh, well, I am totally shagging Wade. Okay, because that's He's my type. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, if you're with a boy, it's gonna be that kind of boy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and. Um, I'm going to marry Alfonso for the same reasons that Gordon, not for the shagging part, but because you're, you're up to such big things in the world and being, uh, you know, the catalyst for change, man, that turns me on. And I'm like, so sapiosexual that that is like, boom, there we go. Um, and RuPaul girl, we could just be friends. Like, I'm sorry, I'm going to chop you, but don't like hold it against me later on in life. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now we've had, we, uh, Ru has gone down in flames repeatedly tonight. We'll see if that continues. Tony, who are you going to shag? I knew that setup was for me because I'm like the number one RuPaul fan in the house. Oh. And always will be. Uh, wait, in this 
city. In the city, maybe. <laughs> right. Maybe. And did the number one eligible bachelor. Did I hear that? Yeah, I did hear that. <laughs> I did. I want clarification later. Yeah. Well, but. They're talking about me. Uh, I hate to be a copycat, but I would absolutely shag the hell out of Wade Davis mm. over and over and over again. I would marry Alfonso David because he is wow. sophisticated and smart and someone that I would want to have lots of conversations with. And let's be real, like you marry someone and the sex is going to go away at some point. Yeah. Right? So we'll have lots of nice conversations. Yeah. And RuPaul has to go. I love RuPaul. RuPaul, I want to be your friend. <laughs> I want to hang out with you, but I don't want to shag you and I don't want to marry you. Tony, uh, I just want to make sure that I can, I can provide a high- That's racist. <laughs> That's racist. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Power. <laughs> no, I'm going to leave Power's joke on the table. He was going to white slay so Power. That's it. what he was going to do. Uh, okay. <laughs> power, power beat me, and it was better. Uh, Faye, uh, who are you going to shake? Listen, can I say that I love all the ball head men? I love this. I love that. So, um, thank you. you <laughs> So, um, man, Wade Davis, he's a cornerback, and I have no idea what that position actually means. Oh, but I it sounds care. sexy, right? So mm -hmm. I'm going to shag Wade Davis. Now, Afonso uh, David, I have to marry him for the same reason that Josie said. Wow. Like, he's smart, he's and he's doing so good for our community, and that is sexy it right is there. He's like, a daddy. Uh, like, Look at I him. I put white chocolate all over him, too, you know? And RuPaul, I have to chop because he already has a loud-ass girl from Jersey with him. Oh. He doesn't need another one. <laughs> You know what I mean? So oh, I, that's and the by only And my last girl, uh, she doesn't mean girl. All right. Well, kind of. Okay. Kinda. Michelle's a girl. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, Michelle. Oh, we're not talking about Michelle. I just, want, I just want to note that it's interesting that I, the one that is probably the least RuPaul fan I here, know, I'm the only shocked. one right? that said I would marry RuPaul. So, Ru, just remember that it is not hate. <laughs> it is not it hate. It's a married girl. <laughs> I got so much to say. I've got Call so much to say. All right. Well, before we end the show, we want to introduce you to our, uh, our principal sponsor, and that's Jet's Pizza. Uh, if you're coming to South Florida, you've got to try this pizza. It's the pizza of choice of the LB, uh, LGBTQ community, uh, and that's Jet's Pizza. We're getting ready to join, uh, to enjoy it here. I've got uh, uh, one of my favorites. Oh, I love how the green screen is. Yeah. Uh, uh, through green things in the pizza. I'm not sure that that was intended, <laughs> looks, but this is a cauliflower nasty. pizza. <laughs> Great. Shh, power, silence, silence, <laughs> quickly, silence. Well, Edit. Silence. that's it, America. Another week with uh, you and the world's first and most popular LGBTQ talk show in the world. Before we sign off, let's hear from our host for one final good night. Uh, let's start with you, Power. Okay, well, good night, children. Uh, with the new president, we usher in a new era or at least a return to normalcy. Um, but what's next for our community? That's what we need to ask ourselves. And that's why it's important to keep it right here. And it's happening out every Wednesday at 8 o'clock where we discuss, we debate, we dissect all the going-ons. Thank you. And uh, let's have uh, final words from Gordon Woodworth III. Yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, as I mentioned earlier, in bulk just passed, and that holiday is all about setting your intentions for the year. And I think it's really important for us to think about what we want to do moving forward, especially in the shadow of the last four years. And I'm hoping that we don't get complacent, everybody keeps the pressure up, and just honestly lead with love, unconditional love. Nice. And uh, final words from Jonathan Welsh. Um, Make sure to uh, take care of your wellness this this year during quarantine, especially. Um, like make this year, a lot of people are um, in pain because of COVID. Let's reach out to our loved ones and friends and others more than we did last year. Um, but I just but let's just take this time. I think also to let's try to be the best that we can be. Like, let's try to be a community that does big things again. Like, when we do come together, like we've had in the past for AIDS walks and for everything else, we do really amazing things. So, let's, I can't wait to, be do, to do that again. And uh, right piggybacking on that observation, uh, uh, South Florida, uh, take another look at Care Resource. 
Uh, they're an outstanding 501c3 uh, uh, charity that is one of our most dynamic healthcare providers uh, for the LGBTQ uh, community. And uh, my friend, Chef Josie. All right. Hey, guys. Well, listen, it was fun once again hanging out with you this week, and I can't wait to come back again and, well, rock and roll with you next week. But until then, make sure you, you know, if you're in the South Florida area, stop by my champagne and, uh, you know, my champagne and oyster and celebration restaurant. We don't need an excuse or a special occasion to pop a bottle. So, you know, you can visit me at, at Chef Josie on all social media, and we'll see you next week. And uh, uh, a uh, final message from Tony Lima. Yeah, we're actually all headed to Josie's restaurant tonight <laughs> for a little bit of celebration. So feel free to join us. I may have to change that reservation again. No, but in, in all seriousness, I, I love to hear all of these really positive comments coming from our hosts. I think it's, it's a time for healing, a time for rebuilding. And it's also important for us to stay grateful for everything that we have to stay respectful, to be loving of each other, to support each other. That's the only way that we're gonna get to a better place in the near future after all of the negativity, the negativity, I'm sorry, that we've been experiencing over the last, you know, probably five years if you include the pandemic now as well. So stay positive, wear your mask, wash your hands, stay healthy, and we hope to see you soon again. Absolutely, and uh, Tony, one final time, we wish you happy birthday. Thank you. And uh, Happy birthday, Tony. Thank, Thank you, Howard. Great Thank you all. You. And last but uh, last is Faye. What? That doesn't go like that. It doesn't oh, go last oh, but oh, just I'm last. Sorry. The, the, last but not Least. least. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. That's I, how it goes. That's how it goes. All right. Faye, what? Make sure that you go to my YouTube channel and uh, subscribe and like and all that fun stuff. Catch me on Monday and Wednesdays on Q News with my favorite white person in the world, Al Ferguson. <laughs> and for if, if anybody out there is lonely or sad or depressed, go adopt a dog. They make the best companions and that's unconditional love, baby. Okay. And make sure that you follow me on all social media as well. Absolutely. And uh, we wish you all the luck in the new travel show uh, that you and David Hopkins are getting ready to host. Well, America, is what you watch tonight important to you? You sat right here at the kitchen table, right along with us as we just banter around. We literally could have been sitting in my kitchen and, and done the exact same thing, except power probably wouldn't have been invited. Uh, remember, <laughs> if it's important to you... <laughs> <laughs> Remember, if it's important to you, it's happening out. We'll be here next Wednesday night at 8 o'clock, same bat time, same bat channel. Good night, America. Good night.